I very much contemplated actually making this video just based on the fact that this is a little bit of old news now. It actually happened about a day ago, but I definitely thought I wanted to make this video just for a couple of reasons that I'm going to get into a little bit later on. But for the time being, it is currently being reported that Derek Jones Jr. has officially signed a two-year deal worth around $19 million with the Portland Trailblazers. This is all being reported by Shams. Now, the reason I actually contemplated making this video was just based on the fact that, again, this was a little bit of old news at this stage, but I also wanted to make it just based on the fact that there were so many teams interested in Derek Jones Jr., and for him to actually sign with the Portland Trailblazers, I think is actually pretty significant and is actually a, you know, kind of reason to show that the Trailblazers are actually really building something nice over there on their team. For example, a lot of people kind of didn't know what the Trailblazers were going to do. They had a decent starting five, but their bench unit was actually, you know, pretty trashy. We hadn't seen them really do much with it. But now, you know, considering that Hassan Whiteside kind of moved to the bench, but he also kind of started with Nurkic in the playoffs as well. They've kind of, you know, flipped that experiment. Whiteside will now potentially leave in free agency. But the Portland Trailblazers have actually been able to make a couple of really good significant moves that I feel like not many people are talking about. For example, they actually also traded Robert Covington for a future first round pick, and which I believe is actually a really good move. Like, I feel like not enough people realize this, but Covington was actually like the second best player pretty much for the Houston Rockets in the playoffs behind James Harden, and he was actually really good in that. Not just his defense, but his scoring ability with the team, while also Carmelo Anthony, who was one of the most valuable players for the Portland Trail Blazers all season, also actually knocked back an offer by the New York Knicks, which I think is absolutely insane. Like, the team that is going to be getting his jersey, you know, tired, who was also potentially bringing players like Russell Westbrook, offered him a contract, and he declined it to stay with the team that gave him a chance. Now, they pretty much went from an average, you know, a pretty decent starting five of McCollum, Lillard, I'd say Trevor Reza, Kamala Anthony, and Nurkic, but Reza didn't really play in the playoffs, you know, or the bubble, so you can't really talk about him that much, and then you also go from white side off the bench, and not exactly a great bench unit, to in the first couple of days, they were able to move off from Trevor Ariza's bad contract. They're not bringing back Whiteside, it does look like. And they've just brought in really good 3 and D player, Derry Jones Jr. to the team. Robert Covington, who was like the second best player for the Houston Rockets in the playoffs. And Carmelo Anthony to come off the bench. And they've already done that in the first couple days of free agency. I'm very, very excited to potentially see what else they're going to do. I still believe they could be going out and signing other, you know, free agents. Not just that, their young core will be getting a year older with players like Nazir Little and that eventually developing as well. And I still feel like there could potentially be more players that join the team. Now, why Derek Jones Jr. actually signing with the Portland Trailblazers is a lot better than what a lot of people think and a lot more significant than what a lot of people are talking about right now is that he had offers, I believe, from the Miami Heat, even though I think it was only a one-season offer, which was the rumor. He had offers from the Miami Heat, the Cleveland Cavaliers at one stage, the Chicago Bulls at one stage, I believe, also had offers in him. Countless of other teams that no one's really talking about as well. But out of all these teams, you know, especially the Chicago Bulls, where he would have had a guaranteed starting spot, being that 3 and D defender, the Heat where he would have had the same role on decent money on a contending team, he declined all of these offers to actually go play with the Portland Trailblazers. Now, why I think is interesting is, I actually don't believe he's going to come off the bench. I know a lot of people are saying that he's going to come off the bench and they're going to start Carmelo and Covington. I actually don't know if they're going to do that. I believe um, Carmelo will probably come off the bench, and I think he knows that. He's going to be a 15 to 20 point per game type of player that they'll probably bring off the bench. You know, he's going to continue averaging the same numbers that he is now. But now the Portland Trailblazers defense has just gotten so much better. Like we look at the play, you know, playoffs, Gary Trent Jr. improved so much as a player, but they had a defense that was absolutely terrible, like shockingly bad. Damian Lillard, a point guard, not the greatest defender. Gary Trent Jr. at shooting guard, again, under height defender for that position. 
CJ McCollum at small forward again, very under height defender from that position. Nurkic at power forward and white side at center. Yes, both of them are good defenders, but you can't expect Nurkic to consistently guard players like Anthony Davis at that power forward position. So it just didn't work out. Now in the stretches of games, they will have Covington guarding that power forward position, who is one of the best forward defenders in the league, in my opinion. Super underrated. Derek Jones Jr., who's also one of the most underrated defenders as well, guarding his natural small forward position, with McCollum as well now guarding his natural shooting guard position, and Damian Lilly continuously guarding that natural point guard position, with him being able to fall back on players like, you know, Derek Jones Jr., etc. Now, players like Carmelo Anthony, who were a little bit of a defensive liability in that starting five, especially considering he couldn't really, you know, go with uh, sometimes the power forwards that they put him at. He can now come off the bench and be that small forward, I would assume, that can come in and score the 15 to 20 points per game, leading the bench unit. So I believe this is a very significant signing, and a signing that not enough people are talking about for the Portland Trailblazers is Derek Jones Jr. Now, obviously, they've got the really nice starting five, and Carmelo Anthony to also come off the bench. I'm extremely interested to see where they go out on, you know, filling this bench unit as well. I feel like Gary Trent, you know, he'll be the backup point guard for the team. Nazir Little will be the backup power forward. But I also feel like there's a couple other players they could go out and get here and there as well. For example, I'm not too sure what is going on with Trevor Ariza. Hey, I believe he got traded like four or five times in one day. So I'm literally just searching this up right now. I've got literally no idea what team he's currently on right now. I believe he is just kind of floating around all of these teams. I believe that if he, you know, d does get eventually waived, which I think he could definitely get waived, I believe he could actually be on... Is he on OKC right now? Whatever. Whatever team it is, he's on about a $15 million contract that is not guaranteed. I think it could be either Dallas or OKC. And I believe he will eventually get waived. So if he does actually get waived... Don't be surprised if Portland actually go out and sign him, you know, in free agency and bring him back to the team. I don't expect him to remain on the team that he's been traded to just based on the fact that $15 million is a lot of money for his caliber and he is on a non-guaranteed deal, which means if they waived him, they wouldn't have to like give him anything at all. I believe it's only a million that's guaranteed. So for a team like the Portland Trailblazers, they could have just pretty much gotten Covington for a first and bring back Trevor Reza. So then, let's just say they do bring back a Reza, then the free agency could start looking like this. They've signed Kamala Anthony, Derek Jones Jr., brought in Robert Covington, could have possibly brought back a Reza to the team, and all they've really lost is Whiteside and a first-round pick, and they've improved their drafted players, and their drafted players in the previous seasons have also got more experience, while Gary Trent Jr. is now a lot better of a player too. And they've brought back Rodney Hood, which I feel like not too many people are talking about. It will also come off the bench. This team is starting to actually look really, really good. Like, let's look at that team. Damian Lillard, a point guard. CJ McCollum at shooting guard. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., a small forward. Robert Covington, a power forward. Nurkic, a center. With sixth man, Kamala Anthony. Seventh man, Rodney Hood. You know, Nasir Little is probably like their um, ninth man. Gary Trent Jr. will probably be like their eighth man. Don't be surprised if they bring back Trevor Ariza as well. He could be like a 10th man. Look, if Trevor Ariza is like your 10th or 11th man, you're doing pretty well. So I'm very interested to see how this, you know, team goes. I feel like the Derek Jones Jr. signing is not getting talked about enough. And I feel like this was actually a pretty significant signing in free agency. But of course, I would very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Do you guys think it was a good idea by the Portland Trailblazers to sign Derek Jones Jr.? Or do you guys think it was a bad idea? Do you guys think the Portland Trailblazers will actually be a lot better of a team next season? Or do you guys think they will just remain, you know, as that, like, 5th to 8th seeded team? Again, I definitely would really like to know all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. But of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for the latest sports-related content and NBA news as well as NBA content. Don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my iRod slash long channels. Don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already. Links for them will all be in the description down below. But as I said, I said thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.